What's up, my fellow humans? Today we are playing My Name Is You. Uh, you know, I just saw this game. It was like a story type game, story based telling. I don't know, it's kind of like you make your own decisions. So I was like, huh, that's, I haven't played that. It may seem that the story of you is chaotic. However, in reality, it is not. The more stories you pass through, the more likely you will be to piece it into one whole picture. Use every possible opportunity. The truth is somewhere close. Hmm. All right. So yeah, my name is you, and it's the only unusual thing about my life. I'm not gonna put the whole thing. I'm just gonna put my name is you as a title. I suppose I will start at the very beginning. Chapter 1 I guess I don't want to talk in this game. Once upon a time, there lived you. Despite his unusual name, his life was hardly any different from others. Okay. okay. It was Something an unusually so usual day when he was getting ready to go to work. Two hours of sleep. Okay. What a formality. He said to himself, glancing at his watch. He was Definitely. used to working at night, just as he was used to never having days off. That morning, the buttons on his shirt were fastened faster than usual. This right. was not by chance. The tear-off calendar boldly declared Friday, April 3rd. It reminded him that there were only three work days before his holiday, and there was no room for mistakes. His room in a communal apartment was not very big, so it did not take him long to pack. Having got dressed, he quietly walked past the neighbor's rooms into the hallway. Somebody was snoring loudly in the furthest room, which caused you to smile for some reason. But why though? He walked up to the front door and accidentally stepped on a pile of letters. Picking up the envelopes, he saw his name on one of them. You automatically put it in his pocket and walked out. The thought that next Sunday, a huge stone would be removed from the entrance to the crypt of his existence by the power of labor legislation kept you going. Uh, let's read the letter. Glancing at the address line, a chill went through Yu's body for a split second. From Darina. Name? You was confused by the seal on the envelope, indicating the place of departure. No leave Brad. Is she really coming back to Cannot? You wondered. Dear you, my doctor's suspicions are confirmed. I have the same disease that struck you. I thought it over and decided that we need to break up. It may seem that things like that should bring people closer, but it would be unfair to myself. We can have our last date on the morning of April 3rd in the Seafront Cafe, and then I will leave Cannot and go abroad. All right, seems pretty straightforward. He felt dizzy. I mean, you can't go to work, Dizzy, and I'm sounding like Although a slacker right now. Although he suffered but... from excessive hypochondria, he really had an incurable illness. He clearly remembered the day when he heard the diagnosis. Since that moment, he stopped counting new birthmarks on his body. He seemed shaken up after reading the letter, but not surprised. He tried to squeeze out a tear, 
to see if he was still capable of showing emotions. Alas, he just welled up a little. Oh. You decided that it was because he had drunk a large amount of coffee, which dehydrated his already dried up body. Approaching the seafront, he tried to spot Darina. It did not take him long to find her. There she was, at the cafe table. She probably had no clue how much he appreciated her starting the conversation. <laughs> Usually, you are late. I am tired. I hope you understand me. But he did not. Having overcome his anxiety, he squeezed out a handful of words. Damn, my fellow struggles. I know the struggles on that. I mean, given the fact that he got dizzy earlier and, like, he was so... Well, I know I made him come over here, but, like, he, he was thinking about coming here. I, I might as well just ask him to stay. Do not go away. Because there, there would literally be no point in, like, me showing up anyway, right? Like, like why would I show up and tell her, listen, you could go. Like, stupid. I would have Let's really try once that. more. What? Too late. I have put up with my life for the sake of old age. Now, there will be no old age. There had always been a gap of misunderstanding between them. He had embraced his illness long ago and resignedly yielded to his ailment with a loud, make yourself at home. Mm -hmm. It seemed that he had become closer to his illness then to Darina. He got distracted thinking about himself and missed her meaning. Reflections on how to rebuild his life from the very beginning prevailed over the others. He was not ready to renew his relationship with himself, so he mentally grasped at the crumbles of the past seeping through his crucified palms. I am sorry. I have made my decision. I do not know why I arranged this meeting. She paid for the bill and left. Damn. You froze in place, at first not daring to say anything, and then resigned himself to the role of a scapegoat thrown into the unknown. For some reason, he saw something noble in their breakup. He was sure that he went to work immediately after the meeting. But when he came to his senses, he realized that he was on an unfamiliar street, cloaked by dusk. Despite the fact that the street seemed to be deserted, he felt someone's heavy presence. Turning to a rustle behind his back, you impaled his chest on a knife, squeezed in the hands of a long familiar figure. Pardon? Greetings from the past. Whether from pain or surprise, you could not utter a single word. The murderer carefully took out the blade and laid your motionless body on the ground. Blood flowed through the cold mosaic of paved stones. The corners of Yu's mouth spread into a smile.
I suppose I will stop. Okay, so now I just gotta run through this. Once. And... Th it wasn't. Two. Okay. He was used to working. Can I? This. It rip. His room. Part of my Happy. cabinet just fell. You guys don't gotta worry about that loud noise. He. The thought. Okay, so I don't know what route I want to take because I could. I want to go back. I might want to go back to read the letter, but this time I might want to agree with it. I know I said that there's no point. That's stupid, but. Well, let's just try it. just to keep it one route Lance. first, and then we're gonna see how it goes. Was... So we're just gonna keep the one route, Deep. skip through this easily. Deep. So, oh yeah, this is part. Uh, all right, so let's go to the cafe, and oh. then we're gonna agree with her, and we're gonna see how far that takes us. He tried to squeeze out a tear. Just, soon. Alas. You. Okay, dried up, dehydrated. Uh, just tried to find it, her. She was there. She, got that. Appreciated. She, she was mad. I was late. I am. Do, 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 do. But. I didn't understand her. Squeeze the handful of words. Okay, so let me agree with the party. He seemed to be ready for such an outcome. And did not hold a grudge against her. Okay. Nodding goodbye to her, you hurried to work. All right. He was almost there when he saw his boss enter the office building. He took it as his personal failure, although his watch showed that he still had several minutes. Oh, I hate when you, you had barely got into the office when he noticed two male silhouettes behind him. He turned around and saw his boss and a man he had never seen before. All right. To avoid unnecessary explanations, you took a badge from his table and pointed to it. Yes, despite the fact that there was no live communication with clients, the work charter required to wear a name tag, probably to remember your name. Okay, seems fair. Wow! That's a very unusual name. Nice to meet you. Thanks. It is the only unusual detail of my life. An awkward pause hung in the air. The boss standing behind Frank frowned and cast a reproachful glance at you. Frank is our security guard starting today. All right. We have nothing to. A security guard. Some of my important documents are missing. There are only two of us. What kind of documents? That I cannot tell you. Alright, so my boss is acting a little bit suspect. You mean you suspect me? And he suspects me. Hey, no, suspects. I do not. You're lying. Eliminating any opportunity to continue the conversation, the boss turned around and went into his office. He definitely the room suspected. plunged into silence. You got down to some clerical work. You was sitting at his sturdy desk, imagining again and again how the shelves, stocked with books on jurisprudence, would break loose due to their own weight from friable concrete and break his head. Allowing himself a little break, you took his diary from his table drawer and made a note. I never took a plate of soup at school lunches, even when I really wanted to. I was afraid to spill it in front of everyone, but I could put it on the table, which seems to be my life's pattern. Weird analogy. Feeling some satisfaction from writing that, he resumed work. There was a rustle of the janitor's broom and the trill of birds outside the window. More accurate than the clock, you thought. Chapter 2 
All right, we made a chap two boys. On the second and day girls. of work, every and sip of coffee came out of his nose as blood. Covering his nose with his hand, you went to the restroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wish I could narrate a little faster and keep you from getting bored. But it is difficult in my condition. Wait, what? Let's continue. Oh, he's talking to me now. Returning to his workplace, you saw Frank sitting at his table and leafing through his personal diary. Hey, yo, Frank! What's good? Such violation of personal boundaries, it seemed, was about to put you out of temper. Huh. Well, Frank is just a security guard. He's probably just, like, the boss probably just told him to, like, hey, it's because it's suspect. Go check it, check out his stuff. But then it, he has no right, but just for the sake, I'm just going to ask and be polite. Give it to me. That That's not how I would say it, but all right. Here, take it. I was curious. To go through my stuff? In a moment, you hid his diary in the drawer of his desk. Wait, it's his or mine? I am sorry if I offended you. The incident seemed to be over, but Frank's intrusive nature got the better of him. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Why does everyone in your notes die? I'm curious myself. Perhaps the lack of communication affected you. Unexpectedly for himself, he answered the question directly. I'm not sure, but it seems to me that the desire to kill a self-protagonist in the text takes root in the desire to alienate the described situations from a real self. That, 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 that's deep. Wait, it took me, it takes me a second to process this. It seems that the next, that the desire to kill yourself, the desire to alienate and describe situation from the real self. Mm -hmm. You said it as if he had prepared an answer to this question a long time ago, or at least he had thought about it before. Silence set in. Frank was embarrassed by his answer and tried to look understanding. <laughs> well, more likely that it is just easier to kill. The office phone rang. Someone's calling. Uh, I'll answer it. As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. Well, fuck you too then. I want to answer the phone. He barely returned to his desk when the phone rang again. Answer the call. As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. He barely returned to his desk when the phone rang again. Hello! As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. He barely returned to his... I can play this game. I have the tenacity for it. As soon as you came... He barely returned... We're gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep answering the as call. As soon as... He I'm gonna keep answering the call. Don't touch me. I'll keep answering as it. He barely... As soon oh, I just didn't get me nowhere. The ringing bored into his skull. You was buzzing together with the receiver. You involuntarily took off 
but his head started spinning and he was seeing dark spots. Holding onto the railing, Yu slid down the stairs and jumped out onto the street. Okay. He ran into his boss at the door, who stood there smoking. Hey, chief. Go to bed now. You can give me the rest of the papers tomorrow. All right, sure thing. He did not have any strength left to work anyway. Yeah. Although he left some things in the office, Yu was not in a hurry to go back. He sat down on the doorstep to rest. Okay. His vision was not particularly keen on the second day, so it took him a while to recognize a familiar face. Oh. You livened a little. A welcoming grin appeared on his face. Hi, Max. Why are you not at work? I dismissed my students a little early. How are you feeling? Like shit. As usual, another night shift. Definitely sounds like me. That sounds like something I'll respond. If I was your father, I would have fired you long ago. Well, damn. What will be left for me then? Max answered with a question. Do you want me to take your shift? No. No, I'll, I'll handle it. No, thank you. You quickly said goodbye and left. He heard some painful coughing behind his back, and his lips let out a grin of satisfaction. <laughs> Coming home, you could barely stand on his feet. Damn. Notwithstanding his lack of sleep and fatigue, he could not fall asleep. The day flashed in his head on repeat. As for the breakup, he did not see himself as the victim. Mm. On the contrary, the entire time during his relationship with Darina, you wondered, why did she love him? Drained of all strength and weak in spirit from birth. He did not anymore. Dizziness and pain subsided. At some point, he even thought about calling a doctor, just to make sure that he was still alive. That's rough. But sleep took its toll. Chapter 3 Oh god, I'm sorry guys. It's real late by the time of this recording. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We're gonna continue this. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to make this into a series. I'm curious on to see where this goes. Uh, yeah, so just to recap everything. Uh, we woke up early. We woke up in the morning and stuff like that. Blah blah. blah. Well, now our first path. We woke up early in the morning. We went to meet up with our girlfriend at the time. Till she broke up with us, and I asked her to stay, and then she didn't want to stay, and then I got stabbed. Uh, next thing that happened, uh, we went. We went through it again, and then. Uh, we took it lightly this time. We took it well. We were like, okay, we're cool with it. We understand. And we went to work. And now I'm super tired. Our boss suspects us of stealing some documents that we're not sure. Frank was reading our diary. Uh, and yeah, now we fell asleep. We went home. We were too tired. Eventually, we fell asleep. So that's just a huge recap. Uh, we're going to continue off next time on chapter three thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like share and subscribe like you always do and i'll catch you guys in the next video adios